Hello, welcome to this quick Blender tutorial. In my previous tutorial I showed you how to link together gears using different constraints and then setting it up using one control empty to control the entire machine. Well, after doing this uh, tutorial some people asked me to also do a tutorial on the rig I used to make this pump jack follow. So I'll show you that. Um, right now. So I isolated my pump jack from the rest of the machine to make it easier to follow. And what we'll do is to make sure that when this this wheel rotates around its x-axis the rest of the pump jack follows along nicely. So we'll add in a rig that basically consists of two parts. One part will go down from the big, big joint of the pump jack arm uh, down with the connecting rods to the wheel to make the arm move. The second part of the rig consists of um, two bones and, a f and an empty that makes sure that when the arm moves the piston will move along. So to make sure this isn't a three hour tutorial I'll just set up the constraints and um, I hope you can follow along. You can always pause the video or watch something again if I'm going too fast. But let's get started. So I'll add in the rig. So I'll uh, snap my cursor to the center of this wheel. So I'll press Shift S, cursor to select it, to snap my cursor right there. And I'll press Shift A, armature and a single bone to start the rig. Then I'll go to my user panel and change the name of the of the rig to pump jack rig. And I'll also check x-ray down here and set the display to wire so that now I can see through it and I'll always be able to see it. Then I'll press tab to go into edit mode and set up the rig. So first I'd like to connect the wheel with the joint right here. Then I'll just extrude up along the z-axis to the next joint and make my final bone go, go to the center and the joint of the pump jack arm. Then I'll extrude another bone down here that will be the IK controller of the connecting rod. So we'll get to that in a moment. But these two bones are in fact facing the wrong direction because they normally tend to rotate around their head, which is the thick part. So we would like this one to rotate uh, at uh, this point, where is because there's the joint of the pump jack's arm. But right now the tail is right here. So we have to change the, the direction of these two uh, bones. So I'll press W to bring up the specials panel and press switch direction to switch the direction of these two bones. After that I'll have to rename uh, some of the bones so I think I'll do this in time lapse. So now that I've renamed the bones I can start adding in the constraints. So. I'll have to go into pose mode because in edit mode I cannot use I cannot add a constraint to an individual bone. So to go into pose mode I can press control tab or change the mode down here. So now that I'm into in pose mode I can add bone constraints by selecting the bone constraints tab. Well, this first bone I'd like to follow the rotation of the big uh, pump wheel. So to do that I'll add a constraint and make it a copy rotation and make the target the pump wheel. So now if I rotate this wheel those first two bones will follow it correctly. So now that this constraint is set up I would like the connecting rod to follow along uh, with the wheel. So in order to do that I'll have to select this bone and make it an IK, IK bone. So we'll add a constraint inverse schematics under tracking. Well, inverse 
schematics are bones that can not only deform their tail but their head will also move and thereby the tail of one of the bones further up the chain. This makes it a very powerful constraints which are quite difficult to understand but uh, there are some good tutorials out there because I can't really go into it uh, right now. But uh, just for now remember that they're awesome. So we'll set the target of this constraint to be we want the target of this constraint to be this bone down here because we want the tail to po always point to the head of this bone. This bone is, connect is, is called the connection rod IK. So we'll select the target to be our pump wheel uh, pump jack rig and the bone to be our connecting rod IK. So now when this uh, when the wheel turns the, the bone of the connecting rod will follow along nicely and with it one bone further up the chain the bone that controls the arm. So now that these bones seem to work properly we'll just uh, connect the, the mesh to it. So I'll select the uh, connecting rod right here and then select the, um, the rig and I'll press Ctrl B Ctrl P to add parent to this rig and bone. I can do this because I select the bone in in, um, in post mode while I already had selected the pin. So by connecting it to the bone I made sure that the entire object is, is uh, parented to this particular bone. And I'll do this again by selecting the arm, selecting the rig, going into post mode, pressing Ctrl tab selecting this bone right here and pressing Ctrl, pre, Ctrl P and set parent to bone. So now if I did this correctly we'll see that now the mesh follows along with the rig and we can see we have done the first part of the rig and now the pump jack arm is moving along. So now that we've done the first part we can move on to the second part of the rig which will be connecting the arm to the piston. So in order to achieve this we'll have to add in a few more bones to our rig. So by pressing tab to go into edit mode I'll press shift A to add in another bone. Then I'll move the head to be at the joint between the arm and the second connecting pin and I'll move the tail down to the joint between the pin and the piston. Using E to extrude it one more time to have a bone that will control the piston. Then I'll press tab to go uh, or control tab to go back into object mode or change it down here and add in another empty by pressing shift A empty plane axis. And I'll make sure that this empty is exactly at the joint between the pin and the piston. I'll call this empty the piston track and you'll see why I did that in a moment. I'll just rename these bones quickly so please bear with me and I'll call this one connection 2 and call this one piston. So right now we would like this bone to move along with the arm. If this were an object I would simply select the object or select this bone then select the arm and press Ctrl P. But this wouldn't work because then I would be parenting the entire rig to this arm and I don't want that. I just want this for this single bone. So in order to parent a single bone to an object we'll have to add in a constraint. So we'll go into the bone constraints panel, add a constraint, a relationship constraint and a child of. This will do the same as a parenting relationship but this time it will just be this one bone. So I'll set the target to be the pump arm and after this you'll see that um, the bones moved. This is because they weren't at their origin point when I added the constraint. But we can simply reset the, the location by clicking set in first and, we'll, and they'll snap back to where we want them to be. So if I rotate the wheel right now you can see that the bones uh, move along nicely. So um, I'll now connect 
the meshes or the objects to the bones. Select the mesh, select the bone I want, press Ctrl P and set parent to bone. Do the same for the piston, select the piston, select the bone I want, Ctrl P, set parent to bone. So now when I rotate it, they're already moving along with the arm. But there's still a few issues, because this one, the piston should only move around its C-axis. So in order to achieve this, we'll have to change a few things about this bone right here. So we'll go into the bone options by pressing the bone options right here. And we'll make sure that it doesn't inherit the rotation anymore. Then I'll press tab to go back into edit mode and I'll also uncheck the box that says connected. So this will disconnect the bone and make sure it doesn't inherit the rotation anymore. So when I rotate the wheel right now, you can see that the piston already uh, keeps its steady horizontal position. So now I just want to make sure that it can only move around its C-axis. In order to do that, I'll add another constraint to the bone. I'll go to the bone constraints, add a constraint and a limit location. Well, this is a constraint that you'll have to customize for yourself depending on the size and placement of your own um, pumping jack. But right now I'll just like, uh, check minimum X, minimum Y and uh, make sure that I limit its uh, location. But after that you'll have to reposition it depending on what your scene looks like. So for me I'll have to add in a value of minus 4 because the bone is 4 blender units um, on the negative y axis. But uh, at yours, uh, in your file this might be a different location. So when I start rotating the wheel right now you can see that already it's moving around its z-axis nice and dandy. But there's still one problem, and that is that the uh, tail of this bone right here no longer points at the piston. So in order to do this, we'll have to add in another constraint to this bone right here. So we'll add a constraint and make it a track 2 constraint. This constraint will make sure that the tail of this bone will always track to a single place in space. Well, this is why we added this empty earlier, because we would like this pin to always track towards this empty. So we'll select the piston track because that's how I named the empty. And right now when we start rotating you can see that it keeps tracking towards the empty. But right now the empty is not yet following the piston. So in order to achieve this I'll just select the empty, then shift select the piston, press control, pre control P and set parent to object. So if everything worked out, the rig is working correctly. So this is how you rig a pumping jack. And I hope this uh, tutorial was helpful to you. Of course you can uh, download the model of the original machine you saw at the beginning at BlendSwap, where you will get this file with the entire working machine running a cyclic animation. So, um, thanks for watching, please subscribe, comment and like if this tutorial was helpful and uh, you can request new tutorials in the comment section below. Well, uh, thanks for watching.